What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Chris, and this is the fourth and final installment for An Average Gamer's Guide to Total War Rome 2, and this is going to be the Rush Army Composition Guide. Now, going into this, I want to give a straight-up caveat. These are going to be rather simple armies, but they are still molded to a certain, uh, certain, shall we say, purpose in life. So, let's go ahead and jump right into it. As always, I'm going to be going over four different uh, factions in the game. I'm going to be going over Parthia, Pontus, Sparta, and the Iceni, touching on pretty much every single different culture and every single different kind of mesh-up of cultures as well. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Anyways, uh, so this is Parthia. This is my build for Parthia. Again, this is a relatively simple army. I focused on, uh, of course, I always get my Royal Cataphracts. I'm a big, big, big proponent. Let's go ahead and move these over here just for my OCD sake. Anyways, uh, I focused on making sure that I had both swords and uh, spear units because I'm a big proponent of making sure you always have some kind of counter to your uh, your enemy's infantry. Um, it does make a slight advantage and you got to use every advantage that you can. So I go for the Persian hoplites um, over the normal uh, mercenary hoplites because of the fact that they have rapid advance. Remember, this is supposed to be a rush army, so if necessary, I'd like to have every little bit of speed I can get. Of course, I get my Parthian Swordsman, because you have to have some kind of uh, melee infantry. You'll notice that I went with zero skirmish infantry, because the entire idea is that I'm getting in there and getting in there quickly and just going to beat the snot out of them. So uh, I went for, of course, uh, some mo noble blood cavalry and some uh, royal cataphracts. And then, of course, I went for some Indian war elephants, just for the shock and awe, fun factor of them all. Um, again, so these kind of armies are meant to get in, get in quick, um, get past the skirmishers, to break through enemy lines, and really just push through. So if you're going up against somebody that you think is probably going to focus on a skirmish army, this is the perfect kind of thing that you can use. Uh, you can go back to my balanced army composition guide where I go over the ideal settings for every single one of these armies. I'll link that in the annotations here. But yes, so uh, easiest way of doing this is to use uh, you know your cavalry to start an initial engagement of some kind, just one or two units to hold them down, bring up your infantry body, and try to spread them out as, as far as possible to get a wide swath of them so your enemy has to meet you, and obviously use your uh, cavalry, your cataphracts especially, uh, and elephants to get into the flanks and get into the side and try to beat the uh, living snot out of them. So again, this is about getting in and getting in quick. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is Pontus. Now we have Pontus here, and again, I go for my... Uh, uh, Royal Cavalry. I love having Cavalry as my general. I go for, again, the Swordsman, and I go for the Hoplites. Now, these Hoplites uh, have the Rapid Advance, which is to their uh, advantage. I do go for um, some Citizen Cav, and then some Noble Blood Cav and Pontic Cav. You also notice that some of the makeups on these armies, again, is I'm going completely without Skirmish. I'm going just about half for Melee and half for um, Cav. Uh, or, sorry, I should say Infantry and the other half for Cav, because it's going to make it a lot easier uh, to get in to be able to harass is what I use these uh, citizen cav for to get in there and just do some mobility movements around them while I move up the rest of my army. I want uh, the Pontic Royal Cav and the actual Noble Blood Cav to be the ones that are going to be doing my heavy hitting. They're going to be doing my heavy engagement, especially these Pontic Cav. These are going to be my shock cav. So I'm going to try to use. I'm basically going to bring these guys up as soon as I uh, I can get them into range. And by the way, I want to make a side note real quick that that doesn't mean that I'm going to be sprinting my entire army as quickly as I can to the enemy. Um, what I mean is once I get to the point where we are just about skirmish range, that's all I'm doing is punching through. Or if I can try to get them up um, outside of the enemy's view using that line of sight system that's in uh, Total War Rome 2, then it's going to be a lot easier to just push them in. So as opposed to a lot of armies, there's a little bit of that skirmish phase. This entire army is about getting a huge amount of infantry uh, right to them. So it can be a little bit of an infantry spam. There's always going to be a little bit of that to it. But at the same time, um, if an uh, army is well balanced enough, uh, is run properly, can easily defeat these kind of armies if they use their skirmishers uh, correctly. So with all that aside... So again, I use the Balanced Infantry. I'm going to use my Noble Blood Cav to hopefully hold down any enemy, uh, either Cav or Infantry, that they have on the flanks. And my Pontic Royal Cav, I would like to see if I can get around to the rear, because they're going to have some really great shock value, um, especially going uh, when I can hammer an anvil against uh, my own Hoplites or Pontic Swordsmen. So 
that was how that would be how I'd run Pontus and how I, how I have run Pontus uh, in my own personal campaign. Let's move on to Sparta. Now Sparta is by far the most boring faction when it comes to things that you can do. But again, I have to try. I want to stick with the theme, so I said, screw it. I'm just going to make one because it's relatively simple, but I'm going to do it anyways. As always, I do Royal Spartans for my hero unit, or sorry, for my uh, general unit, and then I do two hero units um, that I can, which is the most that you're allowed to, I believe, at Sparta. So, because they give the morale uh, bonus around them. And then, again, I went for the 50-50 split of infantry and cav. They are so freaking boring. They only get one kind of cav. But, again, I've been using uh, Sparta as a basis for my other guides, so I figured I might as well, you know, not stop now on my last guide. So, But the, the principle is still going to be the same. Um, although they are really boring in their unit selection, um, uh, the Spartans have a very, very uh, strong aptitude for this kind of thing just because of the fact that their cav is on the lighter side. But that also makes them more mobile. And then, of course, as well, uh, they also have rapid advance. They have a lot of great bonuses. They're very, very heavily armored. So uh, get, once they get into a fight, they're going to stick in there for a very long time, as anyone who's gone up against Sparta or at least seen videos of going against Sparta will attest to. So they're just going to be weaker in that initial engagement with Cavs. But if you can get some kind of uh, spear, even just one or two on, probably just one on each flank, um of Royal Spartans being relatively close to wherever your cav are, then you really have nothing to worry about in that that uh, that section there, because they will tear up any cavalry that they get into a melee fight with, if you can get your hoplites in there. So, But again, I don't feel like I need to go over a whole lot with that. The strategy is the same. The units are a lot simpler, so let's go ahead and just move on to the Iceni. The Iceni are probably the most interesting um, rush mobility army that I have. I kind of set them up in a, in a two-wave kind of formation. So what I have here is I ha I start with uh, four ambushers because they have, uh, again, they have the guerrilla deployment, which is right here, which allows them to deploy outside the deployment zone. So I'm going to use these guys, and they can also be uh, hidden anywhere on the map. So this is, again, um, the kind of thing I've done before on uh, another one of my composition guides is... <clears throat> is that I want to put these guys up ahead. I put in some um, scout riders because what I want to try to do is while I move up my main army, again, if I can keep them hidden, trying to keep them hidden, um, I have some heroic riders here. God, I need continuity in these. Anyways, um, yeah, I should have put it all together here. There we go. That makes it a little better. Anyways, so what... Uh, what I would want to do is I would get my ambushers and apply them uh, appropriately, bring up my scout riders as soon as possible, rush them up, and try to harass the enemy. Ideally, uh, try to keep my ambushers uh, hidden as far as I possibly can up to the enemy lines, and then while the enemy is ideally thrown off by my scout riders of, um, in any which direction, I'll try to exploit that with my ambushers, throwing them off. I don't expect them to last a whole lot of time. That should be a plenty of time to get my heroic riders in and to get my heroic nobles in along with my chosen spear uh, spear band. So the entire idea for the Iceni is that I'm going to try to throw them off with my scout riders, take advantage of that with some ambushers because they got um, you know, decent charge bonus here, but really good weapon uh, weapon damage and stuff like that. So it's just going to be really good for getting in and getting some of those easy kills if I can uh, get them turned just right and get some flanks, maybe even a rare attack in, um, and then exploit the continued chaos with my better infantry, both the spear band and the heroic nobles, and of course my heroic riders as always. So um, I know this is a rather quick guide, but it is, again, a relatively simple tactic to just get in there and brutalize somebody. The more interesting factor are what units you choose and how you deploy them um, and how you counter the actual enemy infantry on the or the enemy army on the field. So uh, take the, all this with a grain of salt. It's a relatively simple tactic, of course, but uh, the biggest thing that you're going to want to do is try to neutralize um, their enemy cav and their enemy skirmish because even if they have a stronger infantry body again this is an idealistic army composition you might not have as strong of an infantry body if you can neutralize as a rush army their their mobility then hopefully whatever mobility you have will be to your advantage and if you can get rid of their skirmishers uh, then they have the those those units that they have are completely useless so if they have five six seven skirmishers and you can kill them before they can even do you know 30, 20, 10 uh, casualties on your uh, on your army, then they are w uh, just a waste for their uh, when it comes to space in a 20-man army. So they're just a waste of space. They did not earn their gold. They did not earn their keep. 
So those would be the two that I would tell you to focus on because after that, you should have a numerical advantage on them if you can turn skirmishers um, with uh, like neutralize skirmishers early on and hopefully neutralize their calves. So those are my, su my suggestions. I really hope you guys have enjoyed all these different guides um, and you can take to use them to your advantage if you're having a hard time building um, certain armies. Uh, whether it's in the campaign or in the multiplayer. If you did enjoy this, please like and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Uh, don't forget to uh, like the video, comment, and share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.